All right, so coming into that comfortable seat, whether it's kneeling or whether it's crossing your legs, that's definitely what I'm gonna do. Your hands can be on your knees. You can take one hand to your belly and then one hand to your heart if you wanna feel that connection. Or you can simply have your hands at heart center. A couple different options for you. This blustery early evening we have going on. Taking a couple moments to come into your breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. On the inhale, you're bringing that breath and energy in through your nose. It goes back over the back of your throat and down into your belly. The belly fills. And as you exhale, go ahead and draw the belly button in toward the navel. Relax the tops of the shoulders. And exhale fully and deeply. It's almost a little bit of core work if you really want to think about it that way. So you can inhale deeply, allowing the belly to fill. The hand can rise with the belly, and on the exhale, you exhale out through the nose. The navel draws in toward the spine. At the very bottom of your exhale, when there's almost no more breath in your lungs, that's when you push a little deeper with your abs and draw that belly button in, making it a little bit more active and core-oriented, yeah? One more deep inhale through the nose. And then exhale. Letting the belly empty out, drawing the navel in. At the very end, you push that last little bit of air out. It's a little tip to Stephanie. She does an amazing Pilates and yoga class if you really want core work. One more deep inhale. And on your next exhale, relax the tops of the shoulders away from the ears. On your next inhale, imagine a string at the top of the skull that draws you up, makes you nice and tall. Exhale. Push the belly button back toward the spine. One final inhale together. And then exhale, sigh out the mouth. Nice audible. <sighs> Rinsing off that day. Go ahead and continue to sit here and breathe. Hello, everyone who just tuned in. Um, welcome to Align and Meditate. Um, we're going to be doing a lot on the, um, the mind, heart, and body connection tonight. So right now we are linking the, um, the mind and the body, right? Connecting the breath to the mind. Letting all of the stress of today and all the worries of tomorrow fade with every exhale, every inhale. Breathe into your body and notice where you're holding tension. And then on the exhale, soften that space. Make it a little softer, a little lighter, a little more open feeling. For me, when I feel tension in my body, it feels tight and closed. So the point is to, as you exhale, bring that softness and bring, you're actually physically bringing blood flow to that area too. So hopefully, maybe that will fade. Maybe your mind goes to another one. Maybe your mind has wandered to other things that are happening around you, like the sounds around you. If you have kids at home or animals that are barking, continue to breathe. And if you do have distractions around you at this point in time, if they irritate you, take note of that. And just notice if you feel it somewhere physically in your body, or if you even were aware of the fact that it irritated you. Come back to your breath. Come back to your body. Feel your heart beat especially if you have your hand under uh, on top <laughs> if you have your hand on top of your heart right now and you can really feel that connection one thing that's going to be happening uh, so we have this new moon so not a lot of light going on um, literally there's not a lot of light at all it's pitch black in the sky and I know that we're all feeling like this is a very dark kind of time you want to go ahead and release your hands to your knees wherever they happen to be right now and just go ahead and come into some mindful movement of the shoulders rolling them back or forward just getting into or you can do them one at a time um, just getting into the shoulder joints and kind of loosening them up noticing as you move them as slowly as you want you continue to breathe and notice 
if there's any point in that range of motion that you're doing, this circumductive movement, noticing if there's anything that's kind of like, ooh, that feels this way, or this feels that way. So once again, doing both or individual. So this um, new moon is definitely a pretty dark time, literally, and um, uh, metaphorically for us. And um, just really being able to take note of what exactly is going on in your mind throughout the next couple of weeks as we work through this. It's called a pre-shadow. So once again, rolling your shoulders, just keep on getting into your body here as I talk to you a little bit, and then we'll really get into some uh, building some organic heat with some core work, okay? Um, so there's this pre-shadow of Venus going into retrograde. And uh, so retrograde is when a planet travels backwards in the sky, literally there's a loop-de-loop -loop and then goes backwards. And it's associated usually with a lot of negativity. And um, I'm trying to kind of like debunk that through my learning curve of it all, um, which one way to reword the language behind that is that it's a time for introspection. It's time to learn what you need to change, what patterns of behavior are keeping you stiff and stuck in the same ruts, the same routines, the same patterns, right? So that's what these time periods are. It's actually a really, really beautiful time that we have to be able to kind of dig deeper, especially since most of us are alone with our thoughts. And uh, so just really being able to take note of the heart and the mind connection that will be coming up during this retrograde because Venus is um, reflective of our relationships, both romantic, platonic, long-standing, family, all of it, all of the relationships in our, life, uh, in our lives, uh, Venus has that sway over. And um, Venus also really values intellect. The way to a Venus is definitely, you know, kind of a Venus mind state is by definitely stimulating your intellect. So, once again, over the next couple of weeks, really coming to reflect on what things are showing up for you, what's popping up in your mind, what old memories are you remembering, and then maybe jotting them down in a journal, or just taking note to see what the next couple, what the next month is really going to look like. Uh, we're in this Venus retrograde until like the end of June. So it's really two months. So um, we have a very, very long haul ahead of us. It's time to pick up some really good practices and try to change that mindset. So this is a practice of mindfulness, of being aware of the thoughts that are coming up in your body and where you might be storing them. So we've got enough shoulders there, right? I just yammered for a minute. So go ahead, shimmy it out a little bit, come back to stillness. On an inhale, raise the arms all the way up to frame the head. We're going to twist here. So if you're sitting crisscross, if you haven't already come to crisscross, please come back to it. Inhale the, the arms up, and then we're going to twist to the right. So taking the left hand to the outer right knee and letting the right fingertips come down behind you in a nice tented formation. And as you twist and breathe here, stay nice and tall. On the exhale, maybe you soften the shoulders a little bit. One more deep inhale, then exhale, come back through center. Inhale the arms up and then twist the other way to the left, taking the right hand to the outside of the left knee. The left fingertips come back behind you. One more deep inhale, nice and tall here, and then exhale, release and come back through center. If you're sitting on a cushion or a pillow right now, go ahead and remove that. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Align and Meditate. Um, let's get into some nice core work to build some organic heat. We're going to be doing a lot of heart opening. Ta da because we just talked about that heart-mind-body connection. So, we're going to be doing a lot of heart openers. Um, I'll be taking you guys through a couple of different ones from uh, moderate to more advanced. And, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so, if you got rid of your cushion, great. Go ahead and swing your legs around. Come down to sit on your bottom. We're going to come into a little bit of boat here just to get some organic heat building, yeah? We'll flow through a couple sun A's, probably just to salute the sun. It's our way of worshiping the sun to say, please come back and stay a while. We're done with this snow. I think it's supposed to snow this evening. I didn't say that. So, knees are tented. Feet are planted on the floor. Go ahead and take your hands to the top of your knees. Kind of roll around on your sit bones. You'll feel that bony part of your butt connect to the floor. And that's where all of the attachment sites for your hamstrings are. It's called your ischial tuberosity. It's just a little, like, bony point where all the tendons attach. So... 
All right, come back to stillness. Go ahead and start to lean back. If you need to take your hands behind you for this at first, you can. You can even take them underneath your knees and hold your thighs. But you're going to lean back and then eventually lift one foot and then the other. So both feet meet. Once again, you can hold underneath the knees or you can extend the arms up to be parallel with the legs. Now my favorite tip for this, because what's going on here, so keep holding this, keep breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, really deep breaths here. Embrace the shake if you're shaking, because I definitely shake all the time during this. But one way to really access the core muscles instead of the hip flexors, because we have a hip muscle that uh, really, really tends to take over in this, we want to work the core, right? So the way to activate and isolate that core muscle is by opening your feet. So opening your feet, maybe the arms are up, maybe they're up framing the head, maybe they're back behind you to support you. Even if your fingertips are back behind you right now, like I'm doing, this is still very intense ab workout. I'm already starting to shake. It is what it is. Hold on just a second. I've got this weird echo. Hopefully that helps. Sorry. That was a weird echo. So you're up in this core. If you've already brought it down, that's fine. Release the feet. Bring the hands behind you. Your fingertips are going to point towards your glutes, and then on an inhale, you lift the hips and pelvis, relax the neck back. It's called reverse tabletop. Lift the hips a little higher, and then exhale. Slowly lower all of the way down until your hips are back on the floor. We're going to come back into that boat, okay? So sitting back, rocking back onto your, your sit bones, that bony part of your butt, and then lift one foot and then the other, opening the feet to make that nice V or a Y, whatever. Maybe the arms are up, maybe they aren't. Begin to breathe. Really breathe deeply through the nose here. And on every exhale, at the bottom of your exhale, when there's no more breath, really push and draw that navel in, activating the core even further. Lift the heart, spread the collarbones. Keep breathing. One more deep inhale. Get a little taller. Exhale, release. Plant everything down. Hands come behind you, fingertips pointing toward the glutes. And then you inhale to lift, relax the neck back. And on your exhale, you may lower the hips all the way back down. Bring the soles of the feet to touch. We'll do one quick hip, hip opener and then we'll do one more core. Yeah? Because why not? Actually, I think two more. Because I need it too. <laughs> so, soles of your feet are together, the knees open like a book or a butterfly. If you'd like to just do a little bit of movement and fluttering those knees up and down, bouncing through that. Just noticing where you're feeling that in your body, if you're feeling that in your hips or your knees. Go ahead and grab your toes, interlacing the fingers around them. Get really tall. Draw the core in. When I say draw the core in and activate the core, imagine you're having your picture taken, so you suck in your tummy, right? All right, so one deep inhale, get nice and tall, and on the exhale, bend the elbows and pull the chest down but I want you to not round through the shoulders and look down at your toes. I want you to maintain that neutral neck, so look out at the wall or just up, not looking down, okay? Give me a nice straight eye gaze. On inhale, release that and rise back up. Another way to think about this is about drawing the belly button to the toes. So, grabbing those toes, inhale to get tall, and exhale as you pull your chest down toward your feet by bending the elbows and pulling the feet towards you. Think about a line between the belly button and the toes. And that gives you that nice flat back, yeah? We're not rounding, looking down. Staying nice and tall. And I even feel that in the tops of my shoulders, which is really, really nice. It's definitely a hip stretch, but I feel it elsewhere, which is kind of nice. All right, go ahead and bring your hands to the outside of the edges of your knees and close your knees like a book. You have to kind of sit back to allow that to happen. Plant your feet, go ahead and slide your butt back a little bit. And now we're gonna come back up into that boat pose, okay? Navasana, this core work, okay? Now we're gonna get into some bicycles, cause they're good for us. Okay, so go ahead and sit back onto those sit bones. Begin to lift one foot and then the other, opening the feet for that nice V. Once again, hands can be under the knees to hold the legs. They can be back behind you. They can be parallel with the legs. They can be up framing the head. 
If your arms are up framing the head, relax the shoulders away from the ear. Let's get some movement involved here. Inhale to get tall. Exhale, bring both arms down to the right. Inhale, back up. Exhale, down to the left. Inhale, back up. Exhale, down to the right. Are you breathing? Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Get a little bit taller. Lift the feet. Lift the chest. Release. Plant the feet. Plant the hands. On an inhale, lift the hips up. Drop the neck back. Reverse tabletop. Lift the hips a little higher. And then exhale. Go ahead and relax the hips back down. Beautiful. Okay, let's come into some bicycles. Last bit of core work. I'm definitely sweating. Are you sweating? <laughs> All right, so you're going to go ahead, extend your legs nice and long. We'll come into this with a little bit of core work too. So your legs are extended. Flex your feet as if you could put footprints against the front wall. Inhale, lift the arms up parallel. Begin to tuck the tailbone and scoop out the belly. Really engaging, drawing the belly in. Like you're on the beach and someone cute walks by, so you suck it in. Think about it, right? When this all is over, we're going to want to look our best, right? <laughs> we'll try anyways. So, with every exhale, you get a little bit lower. Inhale, engage that core. Exhale, a little bit lower. And you're going to keep doing that as slow as you need to, linking your breath to movement. Wow, it's snowing now, you guys. Every time I teach yoga, it snows. Sweet. Okay, are you on the ground yet? <laughs> Keep going. If you really want more core work, shake it out, sweat it out. Once your shoulders reach the mat and the ground, inhale the arms up to up overhead, point the toes forward, full body stretch, and then relax the arms down along the sides. Maybe windshield wiper the feet a little bit, getting into the hips. On an inhale, bring both knees into your chest. Wow, it's really coming down. <laughs> both knees into your chest. Kind of roll around, give your nice massage to the low back. Maybe bring your head up to your knees. Release the shoulders back down and the head back down. So coming into these bicycles, you're going to stack the knees over the shoulders here. So right like that, like you're stacked right above them. You can even kind of uh, make like uh, a 90 degree angle with the knees and the feet. Yeah, stay nice and flexed through the feet for now, just to keep the protection in the legs. Bring both hands behind your head. Keep the elbows open and try to keep them open the whole time here. So, um, if you've done a bicycle before, then go ahead and start to move to your own breath. Nice and slow, whatever pace you need right now. But basically what you want to do is you're going to, I'm going to start on the right. So as you inhale, you bring the right elbow across the body to the left knee. And as you do that, you extend the right leg forward. You can point your toe. I like to point my toes or you can keep them flexed. It's up to you, whatever feels best in your body right now. So. Right elbow to left knee, bring it back, and then swap. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Now, keep going to your own breath as slow as you need to. Keep breathing. Every time you come up and across the body, you inhale, exhale, inhale across the body, and you lengthen the opposite leg, right? So if you're twisting to the left, the left leg extends. Twist to the right, right elbow to left knee, left leg extends. Keep going. Keep going to your own breath. Three more. And after your third, keep the knees in toward the stump, toward the chest and the stomach. Relax the shoulders and the head down to the earth. Bring the hands up to the knees. Roll around. Massage the low back. Take the arms out in the capital T off the mat. And then go ahead and lower both knees over to the right. You can look out over your left arm if that's comfortable for your neck. Inhale, back up through center, and then exhale, lower the knees over to the left, looking out over the right arm if that's comfortable for your neck. Inhale, back up through center, lower the feet to the mat. We'll come into some pigeon here. So coming into pigeon, both feet are planted on the mat, your knees are tented, shoulders are down on the mat, so you're laying down with the knees tented. On an inhale, I'd like you to cross the right leg over the left knee. 
Stay nice and flexed through that right foot, please. On an inhale, go ahead and lift the left leg off the mat. So left foot comes off the mat. You're in this figure four position with your right leg on top of the left knee, yeah? Reach through, grab the left thigh closer to the glute, not close up to the knee. You want it lower, and that will give you more sensation. Stay nice and flexed through both feet. If you need more, you can always extend the left leg up. You can roll around side to side. I personally love doing that. This is my favorite way to massage the low back. Side to side, little circles. Has your breath disappeared? Has your mind wandered? Bring it on back to the bodily sensations you may be feeling here, whether it's in your outer right hip or along the small of your back as you rotate back and forth. If your left leg is extended, re-bend it. Go ahead and release the thigh, lower the whole formation down to the floor, and then uncross the right ankle from the left knee. Let's come into this on the other side. So you're going to cross the left ankle over the right knee. And then from here, you're going to inhale, lift the entire formation, so lift the right foot up off the mat, reach through, grab the thigh with both hands, and you can experiment here. Really get curious and playful. Maybe start with the hands up right underneath the knee and pull that whole formation in. Be gentle, obviously. You know, don't like wrench it in and pull something. Be gentle. And then maybe try lowering the hands down the thigh toward the glute more. And notice where the sensation travels. If at all, it might stay in one place. And if so, that's absolutely fine. If you need more, you can straighten that right leg. Go ahead and breathe here if you need to incorporate that movement. Rocking side to side. Oh my goodness. My left side is completely different than my right. And oftentimes one side will be a little bit more easy and uh, not as discomforting as the other side. And that's just the way the body is, right? All right, if your, left, or if your right leg is extended, begin to re-bend it, release the right thigh, and lower the whole formation to the earth, uncrossing the, right, the left ankle from the right knee, okay? Go ahead and bring your knees into your chest on an inhale. Roll around in one final couple bit of circles, rocking back and forth until you go ahead and come on up to seated. Swing your legs around, and we'll come into a couple of heart openers. Hello, everyone who may have just joined. Hello, Mo. Hello, Claire. All right, so let's get into some of those heart openers I was talking about, yeah? All right, so the first one I'd like to start with, I would like you all to be kneeling. If you need to get a prop, um, like if there's a lot of weight, if there's too much weight in your hips on top of your ankles, you can get a pillow or a yoga block and then put that underneath in between your legs, right? So then your seat is a little bit taller too. It's just less pressure on your knees and on your ankles. So this is a very gentle one to start off with. Um, it's kind of a precursor to camel. And then we'll be doing like this really beautiful flow camel by the end of it if everything goes according to plan. So kneeling, I'd like you to, just from here, we're just gonna come back into that circumduction range of motion movement that we started class with while I was talking to you guys. So, on an inhale, you're gonna start with the right hand. The whole right arm, stay nice and flexed through all five fingers, really sending energy out, activating the whole arm. And as you inhale, bring it forward. And as you exhale, bring it down behind you. If this causes you any shoulder pain, anywhere within the shoulder joint, maybe make smaller circles, okay? I just want enough so that you're feeling it across the chest, into the shoulder, and even the back too. I just want you to feel some sensation within the shoulder joint. So once again, linking this breath to movement, that mind-body connection of inhaling to lift the arm up, and once it reaches the top, the zenith of the arch and the circle, then you exhale, come back down, inhale back up. And this can be as large as you want. Maybe your fingertips touch the ground on the way down. Maybe they touch the foot as they come back behind. Yep. And just for fun, let's just go the other way too with this. So reversing this, inhaling to come back up and around. And 
then exhale as you bring it down forward. Maybe it touches the top of your thigh or the ground beside your leg. One more inhale, lifting all the way up and then exhale coming down. So even if this is just a simple mindful movement that you do on a daily basis, especially if you sleep on your side at night, which I am very guilty of, this is a wonderful way to just get some movement into your joint after sleeping. So waking up in the morning and just doing those shoulder rolls and getting more blood and movement back into that stiff joint that you've been pouring weight into all night. This is a really nice way to do that. So coming into the other side here, the left side, it stops snowing. This is a good thing. That was intense. All right, so starting by bringing the arm forward, left arm this time, yeah? Nice and flexed through all five fingers. Inhale, coming forward. Exhale, coming back. You can follow with your line of vision. Watch the arm go all the way around, up and on the inhale, and then exhale back down behind you. You can absolutely follow the arm with your eyes. One more, inhaling to come forward at the top, then you begin the exhale. All right, we're gonna reverse that. So other way, inhale, back up behind you, and then exhale as the arm comes forward. Maybe letting the fingertips grace the ground or the top of the thigh. This is also really great for any musicians out there who are watching right now who are probably spending more time than ever practicing on their passion, which is wonderful, just like me for sure. But I can definitely feel it when I've been sitting for two or three hours playing. So coming into this mindful movement practice before and after you practice your passion, that's also a wonderful way to incorporate this. All right, go on ahead and come on back to stillness. Give a little shimmy to both shoulders. That shimmy keeps all of the cerebral spinal fluid that's encasing your spine and your brain. It's like this magical unicorn liquid that just encases all the nervous system. And it's, it's, it's one way to keep that flowing. So that little shimmy, I learned that from massage school because we were constantly sitting on the ground, so we're all really stiff. So yeah, just coming into that, keeping that loose. Beautiful. Let's get in between the shoulder blades while we're, sit while we're seated here, yeah? So we're gonna do some eagle arms about it. All right, so you can go ahead, take the right elbow under the left, and then try to wrap the arms around each other so that the palms come to touch. A lot of people can't get them to fully touch, which is absolutely fine. Just get it as far wrapped around the front of the wrist as you can, just so that you feel that. Maybe you just feel it in the forearms right now, that's definitely where I'm feeling it. Now to get into in between the shoulder blades, you inhale, lift the elbows, Maybe this is enough for you. Maybe you pause and stay here and feel the stretch that goes all the way across your entire upper back, okay? If you want more, as you exhale, you can lower the hands away from the face, trying to extend the arms. That will really liven up your shoulders. Rebend the elbows, inhale, lift the elbows up, and then exhale if you need more. You can lower the arms away. Rebend the elbows, inhale, lift, exhale, lower forward. All right, go ahead and unwind those arms, shake it out. Let's come to this on the other side. So left elbow, left arm, really underneath the right, yeah? Bringing those arms around each other as much as you can. If this is enough sensation for you, stay here and breathe. If you need more, on the inhale, you lift those elbows up. That livens them right up for me. Maybe you stay right there. If not, you can exhale and lower the hands away from the face. Rebend the elbows, inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower away. Rebend the elbows. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower the hands away from the face. Release the arms. Shake it out again. Really just shake out the wrists this time. All right. Go ahead and remove the cushion or the pillow or the block. Come uh, out from seated. And let's come into a couple more of these, um, these heart openers. So I want you to come up to fully kneeling. You can tuck the toes, or you can have the tops of the feet pressed against the earth. It's about whatever is comfortable for your knees. Um, if you need something like a towel or a blanket, uh, or even you can fold the top of your mat over and then place your knees on that. 
just for a little extra squish if you have sensitive knees, okay? So coming into this, this still isn't full camel, this is just kind of some, uh, some mindful movement that looks like camel, which is a beautiful back bend heart opener. So I'm going to tuck my toes personally. And um, so we're going to inhale, raise both arms up parallel. Now we're gonna be doing that same motion, but you're gonna keep the left arm up the whole time, right? So you're gonna keep the left arm stationary and parallel. Inhale, lift, sweep up, look back as your arm comes backwards. Maybe it touches the top of your ankle, the back of your leg. Bring it up forward again to me, yeah? So was, once again, let's try that with blinking breath to movement now. So you inhale, lift up, look at the arm, watch it go around, and then exhale at the top of the inhale. Doesn't matter where the arm is, just as long as you're inhaling fully. And then as you're twisting to open here, then when you're ready to exhale, begin the exhale, which will usually be on the way down, and then bring the arm back up to parallel. So that should be one full breath. So inhale, first half. Exhale, second half. Back to starting position. And then once you bring it back, you instantly continue this movement, continue this flow movement. So then you inhale, lift the left arm. And then exhale, bring it back up. And then once, you, once your left arm comes up, then you inhale, begin the right again. So you're going through this opposite beautiful motion. You can get into as much of a back bend here as you want. You can bend into the back if you want or if, that's, if that mobility is not there for you, then just focus on the arm motion. You don't have to do the back bend portion of it, okay? Yep, so, and as much as you wanna get into that back bend, really be careful with that because you need to protect your low back at the same time. So I need you to really focus on drawing in that core as well and protecting the low back by engaging your core. So maybe instead of getting into the back bend, you focus on engaging that core also while doing this motion instead, which completely changes the movement and the breath and mind connection, right? So if your heart isn't pumping now, mine certainly is. So all three of those definitely working in tandem here, right? Bringing new blood to the areas through the heart, body is stretching and moving, bringing new nutrients and new oxygen to all of our sore and stagnant muscles, and the mind is focused on the breath, or the mind is focused on the body and the sensations that you're feeling. Maybe the breath comes naturally with this movement. It's all about practicing. So if you're still going through this motion, beautiful. If not, you can go ahead and come back. You can stop with your arms, lower them down to your sides. Go ahead and re-bend, lowering the hips onto the ankles. On top of the ankles, hopefully, if you haven't already. Um, you can go ahead and bring the legs out long in front of you. And we're going to do one seated forward fold, and then we'll get into some down dogs, yeah? So extend the legs nice and long in front of you. Your ankles are nice and flexed. Inhale the arms up to frame the head. And then exhale, bow forward. Letting the hands come to the tops of the shins, the knees, the ankles, or the toes. I'm just noticing where you're feeling this. We're getting into the back. We're getting into the backs of the legs. I certainly feel this very much in the backs of my knees. Also in between my shoulder blades. I'm glad that I did those eagle arms because now I'm definitely feeling more in my shoulders and upper back than I normally would, I feel like. Slowly release those hands from wherever they are and inhale, rise back up, stacking the shoulders over the hips, bend the knees, swing them around, go ahead and come into down dog. So your hands are at the top of your mat, you tuck those toes, you lift the hips, and you come into that beautiful triangular position, upside down triangle, yeah? Pedal out the feet, maybe bend both knees deeply, hover the shins over the mat, and then as you exhale, re-extend those legs nice and long. Send the hips nice and high, press through the armpits. The ears are right in between the biceps, sealing the entire hand to the mat, especially pouring weight into the index knuckle and the thumb, which will protect your wrists, especially if you're practicing on a carpet. Sometimes the extra squish can cause more sensation in the wrist. At least for me, it absolutely does. All right, so I'm gonna switch my mat around here. I'm practicing in a different space than I thought. Okay. 
So from this down dog, on an inhale, look between your hands. Exhale, step walk or jump, feet to hands. You're in a nice forward fold at the top of your mat. You inhale up to that halfway lift, and then exhale to release. Inhale, come all the way up, sweep the arms up, grab the left wrist with the right hand, and then exhale over to the right. Inhale back up, switch the grip, and then exhale over to the left. Inhale back up, swan dive over those legs, releasing the hands, and you're back in your forward fold. Inhale up for a halfway lift. Exhale and release. Plant the hands, step it back to upper push-up position. So your wrists are stacked under your shoulders. And the back, you can't see my feet, so I'll move up a little bit just so you can see them. But I really want your heels to be stacked over those toes. Okay? And it feels a little unstable, but it really makes you engage that core. So that your hips and your, uh, and your midsection aren't sagging, which would cause a lot of nasty sensation in the low back later on. So you don't want to do that, right? You're engaging that core to lift those hips. And you're breathing, I hope, because this definitely fires up the core. You can always lower the knees down and untuck the toes. That's always an option, as long as you're sending the heart forward, yeah? So on your next exhale, begin to bend the elbows in toward the side bodies and lower all of the way down to the mat in one piece, untucking the toes when you arrive. You can take the hands off of the mat, fingertips on the ground, or you can keep them in toward the side bodies. As you inhale, you lift up for a little baby cobra and then exhale to release. If your hands are off the mat, bring them back in to the side bodies. Tuck the toes and push up through hands and knees or through plank, and then send the hips back, coming back into down dog, okay? So that's your typical sun A. Um, if you're ever taking a flow class and they say flow through your vinyasa, that's, that's that sequence that they're talking about. Let's check my time here. Cool beans, awesome. All right, cool. So we're going to do that a couple more times, and we're going to come back into this uh, beautiful movement and back bend bit. Um, then we have meditation. Okay? So you're in your down dog. Still nod the head yes. Shake it no. Really sealing the entire hand to the mat. Lifting the hips high. On an inhale, lift up to both tippy toes, and then exhale, lower the heels to the mat again. On an inhale, look between your hands. Exhale, step walk or jump. Feet to hands. Inhale up for that halfway lift. And then exhale to release. Inhale, come all the way up. Sweep the arms up. Bring the hands down through heart center as you bow forward and come right back into that forward fold. Yeah? So from the forward fold, you inhale up for that halfway lift. And then exhale, release. Plant the hands, step it back to upper push-up position. Back in this push-up position. And then on your exhale, you bend the elbows and toward the side bodies. Lower all of the way down in one piece. Untuck the toes when you arrive. Inhale up for that little baby cobra. It's such a small little lift. It's really not big at all. And then exhale to release. Tuck the toes, push up through hands, knees, or planks, and the hips back. Coming back into your down dog. Beautiful. And if at any time if you have any questions that pop up during class, you can always private message me after, and I'll do my best to, uh, to help you work through those too. Um, literally any questions you have about your practice. I'm always willing to help. I can do private Zoom classes, whatever you need to like have your questions answered at this time. All right, so let's do that one more time, shall we? On an inhale, look between your hands. Exhale, step walk or jump, feet to hands. You inhale up for that halfway lift, and then exhale to release. Inhale, come all the way up, sweep the arms up, bring the hands down through center, through with your heart space, and then forward fold back over your legs. So you're in this forward fold to the top of your mat, yeah? Heel toe the feet out past hip distance. Grab your opposite elbows and sway in ragdoll. You can bend very generously into the knees as you go from side to side. Or you can keep the legs straight and just kind of make very small little motions. And this gets right into your low back, yeah? Go ahead and come back to stillness. Release the hands to the mat, heel toe the feet in once, and then turn the toes out toward the corners of your mat. Begin to bend deeply into the knees, lowering the hips all of the way down. Bring the hands to heart center, push the elbows into the inner knees, and get tall, coming into a nice malasana here, yeah? So it kind of looks like this. It's a squat position. If your heels can't touch the mat, that's fine. Just really breathe into that space. This is a great stretch for the feet, okay? 
So you're staying nice and tall here. You're drawing your knees in toward the midline that separates your body into left and right, right? So as you're bringing the knees in toward the midline, you're also pushing the elbows into the knees, which sends them out. So you're creating this beautiful resistance, and that's what makes you nice and tall here, okay? All right, so from this, we're going to do just a couple more flow bits here. So release your fingertips to the mat. Inhale, lift the hips up. And then exhale, re-bend, lowering the hips down, hands in the heart center. Stay tall on the inhale. Exhale, release the fingertips. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, re-bend the knees, lowering the hips. Bring the hands to heart center. All right, go ahead and release your fingertips to the earth. Go ahead and walk your hands behind you, lower down to your seat all the way. Extend those legs out long again. Nice flexion through the ankles, keeping the feet nice and flexed. Inhale the arms up to frame the head. And exhale, bow forward. If you want to get more into the side bodies here, you can take your right hand to the outside edge of the uh, left shin or the left foot. That'll really, really get into the side body here all along the rib cage. If you'd like to switch, you can do that. Take the left hand to the outside of the right shin or the right foot. Release those hands and inhale, rise all the way up, stacking the shoulders over the hips. Swing the knees around to the left, come back up into this kneeling position. So, this one is, um, this one's pretty intense. Let me explain this a little bit. And um, if it's something you want to try, you absolutely can. But if not, I encourage you to come back into that camel that we were doing earlier. That it's camel-like. It's not full camel, right? But that beautiful motion. If you'd like to go all the way to camel, I'll offer that too. So you can go through this motion of just opening each shoulder and pec unilaterally. Unilaterally means one side at a time. If you want to do a bilateral stretch of the chest and shoulders, which is both sides, by being two sides, yeah, you're going to come into the full expression of camel. So your toes can be tucked or untucked. If you have blocks, that's a great prop to have right at the outside edge of your ankle, at each ankle on each side, yeah? So you're going to inhale the right arm up. Go ahead and bring it down behind. Look behind and let it connect to the top of the right ankle or the heel. And begin to kind of slowly, because you were looking down at that right side, right? So now go ahead and start to look back up. Bring the left arm up and around, and then bring it down. So this is the full expression of camel. It's a beautiful, beautiful heart opener. Your neck is relaxed back. Big, big arch in the low back. And to come out, you can release the hands and then bend and lower the hips over the ankles. So that's the full expression of camel. If that is in your practice and you would like to try that, you absolutely may. If you'd like to come into something a little bit more different and flowy, you're actually going to bring your knees back around. Your feet are tented. You can kind of walk them in about halfway, so not as far out as they were in boat. They're about halfway to your, to your, uh, to your glutes, yeah? Um, so what you're going to do here is you're going to inhale, lift the hips. You're on both of your back hands here. So what this is, so you're in like a reverse tabletop here. But what you're going to do, so actually lower the hips down really quick, because I want this to be in one fluid motion. It's a little tricky to get into. So you're going to start with your right hand lifted. Your left palm is sealed to the mat, okay? So as you inhale, you lift up, lift the hips, and then send the arm back. And then on your exhale, you bend and lower the hips, bring the right hand down behind you, and then inhale, lift. And then re-bend, lowering the hips, set the hand down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, rebend the hips, bring the right hand down. Inhale, lift up on the left side. Beautiful. And this is a really nice kind of way to get into, um, it's called wild thing, or um, flipping the dog, if you've ever heard those expressions, which is when you go from uh, down dog, and then you lift one leg up and bring it over. It's a really, they're beautiful moves, and this is a really nice way to kind of experiment and see how high you can lift your hips. Um, so be very, very gentle, um, stop when your body says to stop. And if you're still going through that motion of lifting and then bending and lowering, lifting 
and bending and lowering. Lifting, bending and lowering. Beautiful. So that was a couple different options for you guys to get into. Wherever you are, I'd like you to come back to seated. If you're on your knees, bring the legs back around to crisscross or to kneeling, I guess, if kneeling works for your knees. Grab that prop again. It's time to come into the meditation portion of the class. So finding a little bit of stillness with the mind after working the body, pumping through the heart. If any emotions or any thoughts come up during your practice, um, that's probably because we store emotion on a cellular level. Everything we've ever experienced in our entire life is stored somewhere within our bodies. So. Actually, you know what? I think I would like to change my mind. Change my verdict, actually. I would like to give you guys a quick five-minute shavasana because that was a lot of blood pumping. So go ahead and remove the prop from underneath your hips. Go ahead and... With your knees tented, just lower all of the way down to the mat. Once you've lowered all the way down to the mat, you can extend the legs long. I just want you guys to kind of relax after that because I know that that was a lot of movement. A lot of um, really, really intense heart opening and back bending, which can really get the blood pumping. So I would like to ground you guys with a Shavasana. And it's more like a reward too, right? So um, with your, you're laying down completely on the mat and on the floor. Your arms are down along your sides. The palms can face up or down. Your feet naturally splay open. Coming into this brief period of Shavasana, of rest, thanking yourself for showing up to practice today, go ahead and just breathe. Check in with the jaw. Bring the tip of the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. On your next exhale, relax the space between your eyes. And just go ahead and enjoy these few moments of silence to kind of let your breath and your body calm down. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Take a deep breath in and a long exhale out. If you would like to stay here for meditation, 
Um, I actually might recommend it because I'm going to start with a body scan. But if you would like to come to Seated, you absolutely can. So once again, uh, the theme is linking mind and body and heart. Um, that heart and mind connection is going to be coming up a lot over the next couple of weeks. Um, just take note of what's coming up and just know that the transit that's about to happen with Venus going into retrograde and into the underground and all that stuff, um, that into the underworld rather, sorry, um, that what's coming up now for you in the next couple of weeks are going to be, it's going to be much more prevalent until the end of June. So just taking note of that and knowing that there's always something to work on and to improve and there's always patterns of behavior that keep us stagnant and stuck. And so this time that's approaching us is about being able to change those patterns of behavior. And one way to do that is also through a meditation practice, even if it's just for a couple minutes a day. So one way to really strengthen the mind-body connection is um, to be able to feel different parts of your body. And by doing that, you become present because you're only thinking about that and your breath, right? So these are tools to help you navigate all of the things that will be popping up, whether it's about the mind and the heart connection that I just spoke about or if it's just about the day-to-day -day stressors. So uh, if you're lying down or if you've come to seated, wherever you are comfortable at this time. Together, take a breath in and a long sigh out. <sighs> Start with the bottoms of our feet. All 10 toes, the ball of each foot, the arch, or if there's no arch in the foot, the flatness of the bottom of the foot. Don't dwell on whether or not there is an arch or not. It's not about judging, it's just about noticing. And then go ahead and travel to the heel. Give your attention to the bottoms of your feet. Maybe thank them. They hold up a lot of weight on a daily basis. Let's travel up next to the ankles. And on your next exhale, soften the ankles and relax them a little bit. Maybe the feet splay open a little bit more. On your next inhale, let's travel up the, uh, up the shins to the knees. And on your exhale, bring some softness to the back of the knee or the top of the knee. If you have any kind of knee pain anywhere, especially since we're, seat, since we're sitting so much, if you notice that you're having different pains, think about that area and on your exhale, bring some softness to the area that sometimes causes you pain when you sit too much or when you walk or when you run. Think about that area and relax it. On your next inhale, we'll travel up the thighs to the hips. And on your exhale, you're at the hips, so really just let them Soften the fronts and the backs, letting the glutes melt into the earth underneath you, letting the front of the hips soften and get longer. Your whole pelvis just sinks a little bit more into the earth. One more deep inhale at the hips. There's a lot of energy in the hips, right? A lot of emotion. And on your exhale, just let the hips melt right into the earth. On your next inhale, we'll travel up into the belly, the solar plexus, where the belly button is, right? The belly button and the space right above, which is the solar plexus. So if you want, you can take your hands to that. You don't have to if you don't want to. Inhale, feel the belly rise. And exhale, feel the belly fall. If you haven't placed your hands on your stomach, I invite you to do so. One more deep inhale, feeling the belly rise. And then exhale. Soften the space under the hands. Let that belly just get real relaxed. So from both of your hands on top of your belly, let's we're going to switch our focus to the hands. 
okay? So as you inhale, feel your hands as they rise. Don't focus on the belly. Feel the hands. Feel the connection between the, body, the palm of the hand and the stomach. And exhaling. Yes, you're breathing this entire time still. Inhale, really focusing on the sensations of your hands. Noticing if the fingers want to curl and bend. On your next inhale, travel up the forearm, both forearms really, so you're going to have to kind of multitask here. Travel up both forearms to the elbows. And if you'd like to take your hands off your stomach at this time and extend the arms, you may. Still focusing on the elbows here as you breathe in. And then exhale. Really let the eye, the front of the elbow, get a little softer. On your next inhale, we travel all the way up the bicep and the arm to the tops of the shoulders. And as you inhale, this time at the top of your inhale, maybe you feel your chest rise a little bit. And then as you exhale, really let the shoulders melt into the earth. Let them fall away from the ears. Let them fall even deeper into the mat and the earth underneath you. Just letting them completely melt. On your next inhale, we travel into the heart space. If you'd like to take your hands to your, to your heart and to your chest, you may do so. If not, just feel the energy as you breathe in through the nose and the chest rises. And as you exhale, the chest falls and softens. The collarbones broaden ever so gently as the gravity just lets them lengthen, okay? On your next inhale, we come up to the throat space. It's a very vulnerable space, right? Communicating is hard. Maybe tuck the chin in a little toward the chest. That stimulates the parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system to start to relax. One more deep inhale through the throat. Maybe you feel the breath come up and over the back of the throat. And as you exhale, soften that space. Relax the throat. Maybe you feel the shoulders fall away. All right, let's travel up to the space in between your eyes. Now that we're in the head at the top of the body, once again, check in with the jaw. I bet the tip of the tongue has reconnected to the top of the roof or the back of the teeth. Bring it away, allow some space to come between the top and bottom teeth. And then on your next exhale, refocus your attention and relax the space between your eyes. You might feel the eyebrows shift All right, final inhale, all the way to the crown, to the top of the head. If you're sitting up on your inhale, imagine a string that gets tall, that pulls you up, lengthening the whole spine. And even if you're laying down, you can still imagine that string at the top of your head that pulls and lengthens just a little bit. It's an energetic cue, kind of, right? You don't have to physically rise. You can. You totally can. But even just by thinking about it, you usually do the physical end, which is awesome because it helps with posture and mood. Imagine a candle at the top of your head now. And imagine that it splits into two sparks. And on your exhale, the two sparks travel all the way down around your body, creating a beautiful bubble of light that connect to the bottoms of your feet, and then they vanish. Together, take a breath in, and a long sigh out. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Um, I will actually be teaching a meditation uh, a, a Facebook live meditation uh, this weekend. So I'll be putting more information out about that very soon. And um, yeah, I hope you all can join me if you enjoyed that body scan. The light and the truth in me sees that and honors it in each of you. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Namaste, everyone.